This is the Pooja and Gurdip podcast from 98.1 CHFI Studios in Toronto, Canada. Hey Toronto, this is Ed Sheeran. This is Kelly Clarkson. Hi, this is Brian Adams. This is Adele. This is Madonna. It's Michael Bublé. And you're listening to the Pooja and Gurdip show. It's fun. They're amazing. Okay, just me, or are you noticing now the fruit flies are starting to come around? There's mosquitoes. This past weekend, I experienced some of that. Just you. Just me. Nothing yet for I you? I live in a condo. I haven't seen a fruit fly in 15 years. Really? <laughs> yeah. But condos- I leave my fruit out on the table uncovered, <laughs> and it's pristine. You're such a rebel. You should see my apples. So does that mean that fruit flies just don't hang out at condos? I don't know if it's an elevation thing or what it is, but, like, I, you know, listen, I'm a condo guy. I'm a big proponent of it. I've never seen... A mosquito, a spider, a fruit fly, a mouse, nothing in a condo, man. Nothing gets up there. Wow. Okay. We have very different lives because I like I feel like there's bugs, ants, all the things. And if you want to be bug free this summer, Babs- Move to a condo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Downsize. Exactly. The end. No, uh, for everyone else, Babs on TikTok, she's sort of known for her like homemade products that she makes and like it's supposed to work. And she says, this is what you need to do for maggots, flies, critters, ants in your trash can. The word maggot just instantly, anyone else, like everything else you said was fine, bugs, flies, whatever, but maggot makes me like, makes the hair stand up. I don't I know. know why. It reminds me of Fear Factor. For some reason, they put maggots in everything and made that like part of a challenge. I don't even know what a maggot is, but just the word. Oh, it's not good. You don't want to know and you don't ever want them in your trash can. Uh, what she suggests you do is just take ground cinnamon and just go ahead and sprinkle that at the bottom of your trash can, on the lid of your trash can. So Keeps that, raccoons away, so too. So that the maggots are delicious? <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> what? It's the cinnamon. It keeps them away. I don't know why. Uh, she also says take cinnamon sticks and put that in your fruit bowl with your fruit, and that will keep the fruit flies away. So insects don't like cinnamon? Apparently not. Why are, they, why are their taste buds so awful? I'm, Cinnamon's great. I'm not sure. And I don't know what it means for pets because there's certain pets they say that should stay away from cinnamon as well. So keep that in mind. Right. But this is a spray that she's come up with for mosquitoes. Listen. Just whisk in two teaspoons of cinnamon into four cups of warm water and let it sit out and let it steep like you would tea. Strain your cinnamon mixture right into your spray bottle. Next in a half a teaspoon of rubbing alcohol and a half a teaspoon of dish detergent. Shake and spray. It'll keep mosquitoes away and it's safe for you too. Just spray away. Mm, and it smells great. It sounded kind of delicious until the dish detergent. I was like, oh, well, I'll drink that tea. And you're going to smell like cinnamon. Like, you're going to smell delicious. You put right. it all over your patio furniture and everything, and it keeps the mosquitoes away. So when I used to live in a house, I remember it would just be like a bowl of vinegar, uh, open bowl of vinegar by the fruit bowl. We're not doing that anymore. This oh, is better. That was so 1972. Wow. Okay. Cinnamon it is. <laughs> Thanks, Babs. I'm moving to a condo. <laughs> From CHFI Studios, it's the Pooja and Gurdip Podcast. Want to know what the hottest food trend of the summer is? It's swicy. I, I, that word is just fun to say. Swicy. Swicy. So swicy is, you can guess, sweet and, and spicy. spicy. Yeah, and you have to say it like Jim Carrey from The Mask. Swicy. Swicy. And you know what? If you actually walk down any aisle in the grocery store, especially like the chip aisle, but even beyond that, like there's popcorn, the burger aisle, you will see spicy or something to do with spice, a little mm. added boldness to all the flavor profiles of things that you're used to buying. My it's a thing. F- my favorite pizza is called Sweet Heat. It is sweet and spicy, mm-hmm. and it is just the perfect mixture of flavors. I feel like spicy is one of those terms that right now sounds weird, like you probably, it doesn't roll off the tongue. But in a few months, oh, this yeah. summer, and everybody's going to be saying spicy. And listen, this is right in my wheelhouse. You know I'm all about economy of words. I'm all <laughs> about combining and shortening. Spicy. Swi- it's sweet and spicy. Like, I love it, but <laughs> it's nothing new to me. I've been doing this for years. <laughs> Why didn't they go with speed? <laughs> no, nope. ah, mm. they tested it. It didn't it's test so it. So speed, it's guys. So speed. <laughs> I actually like that better. It sounds like spam. <laughs> okay, I've what been, do you got? Well, I've been yeah, I've been shortening words for years. Like you know, if if I'm getting like a sandwich, I love a little like hustard or a little money sauce. What? What's hustard or money sauce? I have no idea. Something to do with mustard and honey. Yeah. Honey, oh, honey hus- and mustard. Hustard. Oh. Hustard or money? Which one do you like better, money sauce or honey or hustard? I like hustard. 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 Nice. hustard. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, I will often, uh, when I've got a burger and fries, I will often get a little hot moss going. Hot moss. Oh. Hot sauce and mayonnaise. Mm. Yeah. Oh, I was going to say molasses. No. <laughs> 
<laughs> a little hot moss. Isn't that fun to say? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, and then this one, you guys, I know you guys will love this one, a little cheoli. 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 So it's like cheoli. aioli and... Chipotle and chipotle sauce. Mm, yeah. That would be so good. Mm, Sounds mm, delicious. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, you would be down with this one with some of your vegan creations, Pooj. A little soy sesame. Oh, a little soy sesame. <laughs> little sesame and soy. Yeah. Ugh. And finally, this is an unbeaten combination. You get a sandwich or a burger. You put a little chanchi on it. Chanchi. A little chanchi. No, that doesn't sound good. A little chanchi on it. Is it that, will it's ranch some and chili. Ranch and chili, chili ranch? oil. Wow. Ranch and chili oil. Hold on. Chanchi. Hold chanchi. on. Hold on. Chanchi will change your if whole life. If your sandwich goes chanchi, <laughs> don't eat it. Don't eat it. Speed. The Pooja Ingerdeep Podcast. This is the Pooja Ingerdeep Podcast. I'm a little nervous. Uh, after the show today, I am taking my kids to the dentist for the very first time. Both of them? Both of them at the same time. Maybe that wasn't smart. Is that, I was going to say, is that a good idea? Because <laughs> are you, as a, as a parent uh, of a child who's less than two, are you allowed to be in the, like, dentist room in the office during the appointment i think i have to be there's no way my kids are going to cooperate if i'm not in the room so how's that going to work with they're not getting it done simultaneously then it'll be back to back i mean how, how talented is the dentist i don't know, I don't know man <laughs> the, the arms are involved the feet are involved that's one magic dentist <laughs> Uh, no, uh, my husband's coming with us. Okay, good. Yes, I, this is man-to-man defense, not zone defense. That's yeah. how you have to deal with it when uh-huh. you have more than one child. Um, you can never be outnumbered. So uh, here's the problem right now, and people talk about terrible twos. Of course they're not terrible, but they say that for a reason. Because at two years old, kids don't understand things. Like, they can't process things. They think everything's a game. So, like, it's really hard to reason with them. And they're very much in their temper tantrum stage of life. Both of them? Both of them. So everything's a meltdown. Uh, Bodhi's favorite word is no. So I already, I can see this playing out. We're going to go to the dentist. Dentist can say, can you open your mouth for me? He's going to go no. And then he's going to be like, oh, come on, just open your mouth. And then he's going to have a full on breakdown on the floor, like kicking his feet, the whole thing. Okay, I, I hear you. But also this dentist you're going to, is it a regular dentist or like a kid's dentist? It's a kid's dentist. It's a kid's dentist. This so is they, not their first rodeo. They have they've some sort tips. of magic? They've got tricks. They've got things they're going to do to persuade, convince, bribe your kids to open their mouth. I bet there's loot bags and there's treats. And like, you know what? As an adult, every time I go to the dentist, my hygienist gives me a nice little bag. It looks mm-hmm. like a loot bag with a a little toothpaste, a little baby toothpaste you can take on the plane, a little toothbrush, a little floss. <laughs> it's great. She asked me what flavor of that thing on my mouth. I choose mint. It's wonderful. <laughs> For kids, this is going to be like this to another level. Your kids are going to have so much fun at the dentist because they don't have that association of like poking and pain. Yeah. I don't like the dentist. They don't know that yet. But it could also be traumatizing because I remember as a kid, I hated going to the dentist because it was just so, it was horrible. And to this day as an adult, I remember that. So I, right. I need this to be a good experience. In fairness, though, as a kid, I feel like you hated everything. That That's involved true. You being outside of the house. See, Anybody aren't like that. Yeah, anything that made me uncomfortable, I didn't like. <laughs> You're right. Uh, so we'll see how this goes. Uh, I'll put it this way. At the bottom of their intake form that I had to fill out before we went, it said, how do you think your child is going to do? Uh-huh. And I wrote, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> From CHFI Studios, it's the Pooja Ingerdeep Podcast. We're talking first, and this is because Pooja's kids, Sia and Bodhi, who are almost two, are going to the dentist for the first time today. I think you're more nervous than they are. They have no fear associated with it. Yes, and thanks for all the advice on the text line. Everybody just telling me to be calm. If I'm calm, then the kids will be calm, so I'm going to take that advice. And you're with Paul. I think he's going to be calm in the situation as well. He'll be fine. Some firsts are better than others. I'm not sure how this one's going to go, but there are some memorable good firsts. There are some great firsts. When you think of your first first. What's the one that comes to mind? Hmm. It's hard to not think about like babies, right? Like, you know, the first time I met Sia, sure. it's like, I'm, I'm never going to forget that moment, right? right? So that's the first for me. What about for you? Um, <laughs> I, the first thing I would do is like first, first slow dance with a girl. Really? That's the first thing I think of. Oh my God. That makes me sick to my stomach. Really? <laughs> yeah. Cause, <laughs> Cause nobody asked me to dance ever. And it was just uh, like a very nerve wracking, embarrassing time in my life. But you tell me about your well, first. Well, like I had to ask. No one asked me to dance either. Like as the guy I had in society dictates, I had to ask. And so. you might've got rejected. So that came with fear, I'm sure. Right. Okay. So in grade eight, 
and my first girlfriend. And, <laughs> Is that um, what you sounded like in grade eight? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and her name was Rosa. Okay. And we knew the last song was going to be Kiss from a Rose by Seal. Okay. So it was like our song. That was like my first our song. We had a song because we named Rosa, <laughs> Kiss from a Rose. Loose tie in, admittedly. But that was the first slow dance. We knew it was coming. So we were like, even though we were boyfriend, girlfriend, we like avoided each other the whole dance. But when that song came on, we met on the dance floor. Like the seas parted. Oh, my goodness. And we danced. And I, I honestly, I didn't know what it was going to be like. And I remember feeling like, I hope this song never ends. Because I'm like, this is Aww. the greatest, this is the greatest thing ever. Really? And did you do the whole, like, you know, distance between you when you're dancing? You oh, know? no, I was up in there. <laughs> <laughs> of course you were. Of course you were. No wonder you want to stay there forever. <laughs> and did she enjoy it as much as you did? Whatever happened to Rosa? Uh, uh, well, I mean, it was grade eight. I mean, you move so, on. Yeah, I mean, I went, to a, I went to a public high school. She went her own way, and that was it. But that was, that was the first first I can think of. <gasps> yeah, there's so many great first What's, stories. Yeah, you don't have one when you were a kid? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I immediately just get nervous thinking about first. First for me are always scary because I'm, you know, I'm like timid and nervous about these okay, things. When was yeah. the first time you felt nervous? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't like going to school. I was like, I was that kid. This is the Pooja and Gurdjieff Podcast. What's the first thing you think of when you think of corn on the cob? The first thing that happens is in my mouth, I get that tingly feeling in the back. Does that for you, eh? Yeah, because I right away think about Indian street corn. Yeah. And like it gets that char, you do it on the barbecue, and it's all the spices, like a little bit of a spice rub, some lemon, lime juice. Masala, black salt, all the things. All the things. Um, Forget butter. Like butter's good, butter's but this good, but is this, like next level. It's like it kind of, it's somewhat similar to Mexican street corn, except it's basically just Indian spices. I think of Gerard Street East because Gerard Street East used to be Little India, and when we were kids, we'd get in the car and we'd come down to Gerard Street on weekends, and we'd just walk up and down Gerard Street, and they'd have the barbecues on the street, mm. and they'd have that nimbu corn they call it. nimbu is like lime or, or lemon juice, um, but corn on the cob not universally loved. Um, and producer Steph, I'm kind of with you on this. I love corn on the cob, so don't get me wrong. I don't like eating it on the cob. I w- I love the roasting and the yes. process, but I yes. gotta cut it off. You yes. got a corn stripper? You'll strip. I don't it. have a corn stripper, but Blair showed me when I'm buying one now. <laughs> but um, I when I found out you could cut it because when I was little, we would just eat it off the cob. Right. And so I all... hate all that stuff in your teeth I'm after. You. It's so I'm annoying. Like it, it has to come with like a floss pick yeah. to get it out. It's hard to. The yeah. problem is, is that my husband literally laughs at me every time. I'm like, "Can you cut it off?" And he's like, "Are you a child?" Yes. Like Why he's can't you eating cut it, off it off yourself. Well, because he he's doing it on the barbecue, and so then that's how he presents it. And I'm like, no, can you cut it off for me, please? Can you cut my corn for me? Yeah. It is hard to get that corn that gets stuck in your teeth, like, back there. It just, and then, it's, when you cut it, you get bigger chunks that you can, it's not just little niblets, right? Like, big fork mm. of it. I don't know if this is gross <laughs> or not. I've had a piece in the back of one of my jibs since 1986. Yeah. I haven't been able to... <laughs> See what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, annoying. Thanks for listening to the Pooja and Gurdip podcast. Listen to Pooja and Gurdip live weekday mornings from 5 to 9. Only on 98.1 CHFI. Toronto's Perfect Music Mix.